What's up guys, welcome back to another drawing tutorial. Luffy today with his Emperor's Hacky from the Wano arc. This is from the key visual. They released this cool one with all the main characters kind of facing off each other. Oh, on the landscape page, pencil eraser, hit pause if I go too fast. Three quarter pose, right? So two hands, fists, he's looking at Kaido sort of over that way, right? So let's just go for it. So his eye, big eye, heads, just up here, center point of my page is about there. And we're gonna go up above the halfway line to put his head up here, right? So we'll curve. Luffy's eyes are pretty straightforward. You do a curve up here, curve on the bottom. Pupil in here, sort of looking up, right? And now depending, Luffy's eyes can be black, they can be gray. So we'll go for we'll go for the black in this one because the black in the picture. Eyebrow then just skirts so it goes like right across that eye. So frowning, sort of going up this way, right? And it can be a little bit thicker at the front. Got a few frown lines here. Like that. We have his scar underneath his eye. I love drawing one piece characters. Don't know what it is. I like the style. Very straightforward, very simple, but effective. So nose then, right? So we've got like sort of this sort of frowning line there, and then the nose sort of curves out here. Back around like so. And then we got like a nostril and maybe like another line on the other side, I think. So his other eye is in behind, right? So we're in three quarter. And what that means is this side of his face is slightly turned away. So it looks smaller than the other eye. That's the main thing to remember, right? So this curve is going to be smaller. It's going to be about three quarters the size of this one, three, hence three quarter pose. So, well, it's called three quarter pose because you can only see like three quarters of his face, but usually that means this one's like half to three quarters the size of this one. And then the bottom of his eye, just here. And he's looking top left. So we'll put the pupil top left. And his eyebrow, again, skirts just touches the top and goes that way and you can thicken up the front a bit. And he does have like some frown lines just here. So gritting his teeth, mouth kind of open, right? So we go across, looks like his mouth is closed, but we we'll open it up so we we'll carve it down around like that. Comes across his bottom lip and then curves up the side of his mouth. One piece teeth, very simple line for the where the teeth touch, and then just a couple of curved lines, the side of his mouth there, and maybe like one set just there. And then his bottom lip comes across that way, maybe some hatching underneath for shadow. So his chin is kind of blocked by his cape, right? So you can draw it in, then erase it, or you could draw the cape first. So we'll go a line, we'll go a line for the cape. Coming down there, right? Just across his face. And then the side of his face comes up this way. Now, if you wanted, you could draw the chin in there. If you're more comfortable like drawing whole faces and stuff. You could go down and then across for his jaw. It's just kind of easier for me to just draw what I see, sort of. So his jaw curves up this way, like so. And he's got a sideburn just there. So his sideburn becomes his ear, 
curves around like that. And then we've ear lines inside. Kind of like a letter J sort of thing. And you can make it more detailed if you want. So his hair is kind of blowing in the wind, right? So he's got some fringe lines that come across his forehead here. So say, this and we go around his head because it's a key visual they do it sort of a bit more detailed so they added a bit of like a wind the wind blowing like this way so the spikes will go that way just these sort of like they're kind of like shark fins that's what i always think of when I'm drawing them anyway. And they get kind of smaller as we go down towards his neck. And then his neckline sort of kind of underneath his ear there. So we'll go like that. And then maybe like a neck muscle. Some hatching, and there's another line there, and then there's like some hatching underneath. Like that. So we have an arm grabbing his on his bicep and he's doing the hacky sort of thing up here, right? So first we'll finish with this cape, right? Goes over the shoulder. And it'll go like down the back here. And this is a big black collar, right? So down like that. And then we've got the tip of it here. And it goes back up. And we've got some folds. Like this, right? And this will go the whole way down. Like that, and kind of blowing in the wind over there. So, if that's his shoulder, his arm has to come down to his elbow here, and then we'll go across the body. So, elbow. L for elbow. L shape. Right, and then, like, he's got that frilly sort of sleeve that's kind of, like, bumpy. Now, remember, these things are all blown in the wind. You don't have to do them exactly the same shape as me. Like, I'm not worried too much, you know, the way I'm doing it. Like, it's just once it's, like, bumpy and frilly and sort of thing. Right? And there's forearm lines. Like, it's all bumpy because it's loose fabric. It's not tight to his muscles. And there can be some like dirt and hatching and things on. So that's his arm, his elbow, out to the forearm, right? So you've got this frilly sleeve and then his wrist comes out from here. And he's got really thin arms, right? He's elongated, you know, stretchy rubber dude. And his hand goes around this way, right? You might have a wrist bone or something there. We can see two knuckles. That's all we can see. Just some hand lines there. So he's grabbing his own bicep, right? So it's complicated enough to sort of pose, right? So let's say we do. We'll add like his other collar while we're here, right? So it sort of comes up, down from around the back of his neck, down this way. It's sort of got that spike sticking out there and then the inside, down this way. And this is the back of it going here, down behind his wrist, 
and then his, sh his shoulder goes in behind the hand there, right? So, his other hand comes up here, right? And he's got that frilly sort of sleeve. So just here, right, we've got his forearm sort of sticking up. And then it comes out from behind his, like, hand this way. And we got elbow. And then goes up the other side. And he's got that frilly sleeve here again, right? So you just do this kind of twisty, turny sort of lines like that, right? And to make these look like sort of three-dimensional, these go in behind one another with a line like this, see? In behind. Like so. And then his wrist comes out here. We've got a bump for his wrist bone. And this will go up for the back of the hand. And then we start to go across for like knuckles. One, two, three. And the little finger comes out, curves in behind his hand. And this goes down that way. And then knuckle. Like that. Now we can see we can see some like fingers sticking out here. You can leave it like that, it doesn't look too bad. But he has some like like knuckles for his fingers, like just sticking up here. Like that, it's like you can see just a little bit more of his fingers up there. Okay, so the rest of his red vest, right, comes down this way. And then the front of it here, out like so. And again, it's a frilly, loose, thing right so you've got all these sort of fabric lines and he's got buttons to there another one here and his jacket sort of line goes down that way and here this goes around So, back up that way. And again, it's blown in the wind, right? So, like that. So, we have some anatomy inside here now. So, his chest muscles bump down this way I right, see so you got this sort of V in here and this is like a line for his red vest inside there and then we have the bottom of his chest muscle there and then we have abs so one two three all right so like ab lines here And ab lines up here. Right, and then like the side of his body here. And he's got a waistband coming out from the purple sort of waistband here. And then we can see his scar with these spikes, just the bottom of it. Like some of it on the top, I think, just coming across his chest here. And some of his red vest in there. Do, do, do. So hatching, like he's 
been beat up. Some on his face, maybe scratches and stuff. Like so. Okay, so then his hat and the string sort of dangling down here. So we've got his like bumpy sort of straw hat line here. Goes in behind his head just this way. And then the round dome top, like that. And then we got like hatching all, showing the sort of texture on this. There, and then on the inside, your hatching goes this direction. And his string, so it's wrapped around his neck, right? So it's just this kind of coming from behind his neck, going all this way. A double line like that. Of course, you'd be drawn over things, so if you need to raise, you can. Well, you will need or color over. Like that. And then going back behind his neck, up behind his collar there. And these can have like textures on them. Like so. Right, and so we've got like some more of his cloak going this way on this side. Like a sleeve of it going all off that way like some extra folding lines all coming down and then we have the emperor's hacky itself it's like black lightning right so it's just like you could do this anyway and it'll go over some things so and it like forks and changes direction and all this stuff. Just sort of keep adding as much of this as we want until we're kind of happy with it. There's like thin lines of it going, like all connecting like that. And that's all black inside or kind of glowing black and red sort of thing. But that's it. Luffy with the Emperor's Hacky. Hope it's helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.